what's going on everybody welcome back hawk talk on melrose um gonna be a uh try not to be negative but it's gonna be a pretty uh negative podcast today as uh we'll get into um i was nine to six loss last night in champagne now disclaimer we're not gonna really talk much about the game i mean we will but it's this is not really gonna be a uh recap or reaction to the game it's more so we are going to get right into what needs to happen because change is a must so tyler what's up man how's your sunday go vikings they won again today they um, did so, yep uh but man i being an iowa fan right now is uh rough it's brutal it's 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 I never thought I'd say this. It's just, it's tough to watch right now. It really truly is. I, you know, we, we were texting back and forth last night during the game and we were talking even at halftime and we're like, it, it, I just don't get it. Right. We just, it's the same thing every week. And it's almost like it's getting progressively worse. Yeah. And it, you just, it, it's hard to say that it's hard to think that it, it's getting worse each week and, it honestly is. And so you're right. Yeah, I know. I hate to be super negative here on a Sunday. Um, while defense played great, that's something that we knew. We knew going into the game it was going to be a low-scoring affair. And, you know, we were hoping that Iowa was going to be able to give themselves a chance to to win the game by, you know, scoring at least an offensive touchdown. You probably give yourself a really good chance. Um, that proved to not be the case. So, yeah, yeah, I, I can't wait to get I, into it. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, is like, I don't want to sound because I think with like us, like we, I, I want to say we, we've, we've been spoiled, but with Iowa, you know, where we're at, you know, in the Midwest, I mean, we've been pretty lucky to have such good years and, you know, I get it, it's one bad year, but I just think the reason why we're so frustrated as a fan base is because we see how good we can be with our defense and all it takes is to have just a decent offense. And we've been saying this from, for even last year. And so we're not asking for much. And that's why, like, I don't, want people to think that like you know right because like, yeah we are kind of, i mean i will admit like we we as iowa fans like we have been pretty spoiled the last how many so years Correct. but it's just annoying when uh um, we're not we're not Cal we're, you know i'm like i don't know i'm not trying to throw colorado under the bus but like colorado for example has been not good for the longest time and it's not like we're a team that consistently year in and year out is terrible and we're sitting on this podcast complaining or like it's, nebraska i mean that's or nebraska the, take yeah. take nebraska in the big 10 there's a great example we're not doing that. What we're saying is it's just such a waste of a great defense, of great special teams, of a really potentially a good team. And, you know, like you said, what we could be and what, what we should be, honestly, on offense is average at best. Yep. Or excuse, excuse me, at worst, average. And we're so far from that. And it's, it is. It's frustrating. So, all right, let's get right into it. So, Tyler, what do you know – what happened a year ago today? A year ago today. Um, I I know the answer to this because I think I saw some on Twitter, but go ahead and tell me. We were ranked two in the country. Or well, a year ago today was Iowa's uh, yes. game against okay. Penn State. Okay. A year ago, yeah. 365 days ago, we were number three in the nation, taking on the number four team in the nation. Big noon kickoff, um, afternoon game, transition night game, huge game in Iowa State. It might – might have been the biggest game, maybe not ever, but it was definitely up there because it was hyped all, up because yeah. of all the recruits that were there. You know, I think that's the reason why we landed Xavier, right? It was like that game. There were so many high rated recruits there. It was just a huge game. Loudest game ever, yep. probably just crazy. And we won 23 to 20. Granted, you know, what's his name gets hurt for for Penn State. Um which, you know, yeah. yeah, if he's, you know, stays healthy that game, do we win? I don't know, but we won. So who cares? And yeah, a couple of days later, we were number two in the nation. Now, did I really agree with that? Did I really think we were the number two team? No, but you know what? We don't decide the rankings. We were number two. So yeah, as an Iowa fan, we were, we were having fun. We Since were. then, we are seven and seven overall. Six games with 10 or fewer points out of those 14 games. And we only have six offensive touchdowns, 16 offensive touchdowns in that span in 14 games. And you can make the case one of those offensive touchdowns was a garbage time touchdown against Michigan. So really, we have 15 offensive touchdowns in that span, 14 games. Because if you go back and look, there's a couple games where we, like Illinois last year, we got 34 points. 
Uh, Minnesota, we got 24. Nebraska, we got 27. But a lot of it was special teams and defensive touchdowns. Correct. So if, if you're talking strictly offensive touchdowns, we have 16 yeah. in 14 games. And we're 7-7 seven and seven overall. And that's why. That's why. Our, we A defense can only do so much for you. And uh, you – you included the famous the famous photo that me and you had texted about last night that we oh. were we were pretty unhappy with seeing sitting in our living room experiencing oh, what yeah. we're experiencing during the game and, and and I did we texted each other at the same time we're like are you kidding me I All think I see fine in Iowa City correct yep there you go there you go I mean that if that doesn't explain to me, the the real the bigger issue that goes on here, which is it seems like they just don't care that that every like you said, everything is fine. We are what we are. We're just gonna keep doing doing what we do. It ain't working, man. Yep. And and you see this as a fan and it, it just it's really, really frustrating. It it's is really frustrating. And it and it kind of goes in with uh I love the stat line at the bottom too, if you look at that. Three turnovers, Three turnovers to one, one and one. you're yeah. losing and end up losing the game. Losing it's, game. it's it's sad. It really is. By the way, Tyler, you kind you kind of look like Petrus. You have mentioned that before, and uh, while that may or may not be true, uh, I can probably throw a, a better ball than him. So just disclaimer. But continue. So, <laughs> eh, I don't know. He's definitely not the answer. I'm to the point. He's got a big which, arm, Colin. He's Congrats. To the point, I'm to the point with Petrus where. We just, he's not good. And it's not his fault that he keeps having to get, go out there. So I'm not really even mad at Petrus. I, you know, he has a face. And this is what's bullshit is I love how he has to face the media every single week while Brian Ferentz can just hide yeah. and not have to, which I know assistant coaches don't, but it's just annoying. Cause so I, as much as like, I think Petrus is a terrible quarterback. I don't hate him as a person. And I'm not right. going to sit here and just keep bashing on him. And cause right. it's just, it's, just simple. He's not good. He's not a well, good quarterback. And, and if you you look on Twitter last night, he, yeah, you look on Twitter last night. And he has, you know, he's sitting up there at the press conference answering questions. He's got tears in his eyes, and he's saying how he's taking responsibility for the loss. The loss is on him, and he actually looks like he cares. Yeah. And then he, we're going to move he, on to this quote, which you, you can all see if you're listening or yep. watching at home on YouTube. Um, you'll be able to see this. It's you know the the famous interview with. What's his name? David Eichel. I can't pronounce Yeah, David Eichel, um, 24-7 sports. He, he basically asked him, you know, if you had, again, would you ever consider a coaching change due to the fact that in every stat were terrible, were last, or whatever the case may be? And his quote, if you can see it here, is we won 10 games last year. Yeah. And it set Twitter a little bit of a blaze last it, night. It I set me say. off. I tweeted. It did. Because yeah. here's the thing. I get we won 10 games last year, but did, but did last year really feel like a 10-win season? It did Great not. Question. It felt like a seven win season. Yep. So I get we won 10 games last year. And then on top of this, we look how bad our offense was still last year. We were 120th in total offense, 117th in scoring offense. We were just very fortunate that number one, we didn't have to play Ohio State and Michigan. <laughs> Correct. Uh, in, in Michigan State in the regular season. Number two, our defense and special teams were just that good. Um, they, they were scoring. Yes. yes. And we got like in the month of November, we got awfully lucky lucky a few times. Like Illinois, we were down 10 to 0. If it wasn't for Charlie Jones kicking, yep. you know, a kick return, who knows how that game ends up. M Nebraska, we were down 16 to 6. If it wasn't for that um block punt block. that turned into a touchdown, yep. we probably lose that game. So like last year did not feel like a 10 win season. And our offense was still really shitty. And I wish I, I give David Eichel props for asking that question. I wish he would have kind of carried on and and maybe brought this up well last year you know this happened you know so i mean how can you yeah. explain that so so in the 10 games that we won we're not i'm not talking about the fact that we're that we're necessarily winning or losing we're just talking about one phase of football right now which is our yeah. offense which is the reason why we are struggling we struggled last year believe it that's why when you go back to the penn state game nobody thought we were the number two team in the country we didn't have an offense because, yeah we didn't have an offense we, we, we haven't played anybody that was up to that point besides a penn state game that really, you know, was considered amongst, you know, some of the better teams in college football. And what would happen if we were to go play Ohio State? We would have gotten killed. Yeah. Well, look at Michigan got, in the – Look at Michigan. Correct. In the Big Ten look at the Big Ten Championship. Championship. So, so I just, like, 
Iowa is the only program, and this is what frustrates me. Iowa is like really one of the only programs I think in the nation that is just not going to do anything. I mean, you saw today, just before this, Rutgers, they're firing their offensive yep. coordinator. We yep. saw Nebraska fire their head coach and their defensive coordinator. And look at these last two games. Their defense has actually looked pretty good. A Nebraska defense that was absolutely yeah. trash the first four games. They fire their D.C., and their de- their defense is looking pretty good. Wisconsin, they fire their head coach. They win what forty some to zero or thirty eight to zero yesterday. Um, yep. So yep. These teams are are firing. I mean, the Big Ten. There was another one today. Um, who was it? Oh, Indiana. They're they're firing their O line and run game coordinator. Uh, okay. today. So okay. Wow. And then you have us that we're just we're totally fine, and it and it's because. It start. I mean, you could say it's Kirk, but it starts with Gary Barta. He just he's fine with how things. I mean, hey, we sold out every game. Uh, the program's making money. Like we're we're yeah. we're pretty consistent. So he's totally he's totally fine. Wait till next year about that. Yeah. I, I doubt we sell out every game next year. So yeah, if we don't make a change. And, but... and the and this is just the frustrating part about all this to kind of wrap everything up. Don't, is, this this these stats are insane. Is yeah in our first six <laughs> games this year. Five out of the six opponents that we have faced, they have only scored 10 points or fewer. And we're three and three. Now, if I told you before the season that, because this this season kind of was kind of broken up into two seasons. You have the first six games by week, last six games. If I said in the first six games that we are going to hold five out of the six opponents to 10 points or fewer, what is our record? With everything that they told me in the off season well, about like, let's just the, say offense, like the offense, just, is decent. Yeah, yeah, like the offense. Thinking... Yeah, there, there's no reason that we don't go five and one at yeah, least. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. right. Yep, minimum five and, and one, maybe six and zero. Oh, right, you give um, yourself a chance in that Michigan game. I think. Yeah, and we're three and three. And we're three and three. And I mean that, and we we're wasting. We, we a could great be. Defense we could well. be worse than three and three. So, fuck South, South Dakota State. I'm just saying that we won that strictly by our defense so yeah, we should not have won that yeah. game i'm just saying looking back you you can make an argument that we did not deserve to win that game yeah so and and no offense to because i know there's some i would say fans listening but we should not have lost iowa state at home i mean both, no, both teams no. aren't very good i i will fully admit that but we but just being at home we should have won Correct. that game right Correct. and we had yeah. so many opportunities two block punts right like right then right. starting right. at the one yard line having to go 99 yards like come on we we should not have lost that game i'm still yeah. going to give credit i would say for winning but like that just i mean that's a game where it's just like are you kidding me so just all that kind of wrapped into one so that's that's just the most frustrating part about all this is our defense i'm not going to say is elite because we have seen that we are you know yeah. we're going to give up some plays here or there but it's a real it's still a really great defense though it's a really good defense they're and we top a- they're top 10 in total yards they're yep Third and points and... per game, and they're third in uh, something else. I can't remember. It, it's it, statistically, it's a top. It's it's a top five defense in the country, and and you have literally a bottom five offense in the country, and we're three and three. Yeah. That's why and... our defense has won us three three out of the possible six games that we could have. They've held them to. And and we couldn't overcome the other three, right? That's that's kind of how I look at it. The offense yeah. is our own worst enemy. I keep saying that. Like the teams that we're playing, you look at that game last night, and we lost to Art Sikowski, a backup quarterback. There was no Isaiah Williams in like the second half. Um, and, and they, they had a lot of we, injuries. A couple other did. guys were, were and, hurt yeah. too. And an offensive lineman, I think, like, dude, it just it's so pathetic. Like. I don't know. So the title of this um, podcast is Changes a Must. And so I'm going to give you my three things, my three wishes. Uh, starting off, this isn't a, this isn't one of the three, but I, I want this kind of disclaimer here. As I don't want, when I say Changes a Must, I'm not really implying that I want Kirk re- or fired. Um, you know, if it has to come down to that at some point, then I guess it does. But I don't just want him fired because I think we are uh one coaching higher away like Nebraska to be not very good program. Like it all that's all it takes. And I sure. do not I do not trust Gary Barta 
worth of anything to hire a good uh, coach. So we could become like Nebraska. I mean, Nebraska had um, Bo Pelini. They were winning nine games ever so often, you know, yeah. 10, 11 games, and they fire him. He wasn't good enough. And then look at where they're at now. So so that is the one thing. You do I'm run not, that risk. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not real. I'm not saying I want Kirk fired. And I think a lot of people that when they say we need a change isn't really wanting that. I think it's just it's, it's no. something else. And this is what. So number one. Make it aware that you know there's a problem, that the problem is not acceptable, and we're going to work our ass out to figure, thing, figure this thing out. So, like, that is the first thing. So, like, yesterday when David Ico asked that question, instead of being a coach speak or be, trying to be a jackass and be stubborn, he should point out the problem and be like, yeah, this is, this, is not, this is not it. I would feel so much better last night going to bed if I heard Kirk in the presser being like, this, this just isn't it. We, I don't, this is not working. We we have a bye week now. We are going to figure this thing out, or we're going to try to at he, least. He the only thing that I heard was he's just like he goes, you know, obviously we're not very good right now, and, but then he quickly moves on from it. Yeah, and it it's just and, like own up to it, man. Yeah, like own who, up to it. Who own knows up to deep it. down if he really is like that? Stu- like if his ego or stubbornness is that, you know, there where he actually thinks there's not a problem. Like if that is like, because who knows? Maybe deep down he knows there's a problem. He just doesn't want to like say it I, yeah. I have no idea number two obviously get rid you have to get rid of brian ferentz I, I found this on the on google and this is so true because football is like a business right and it's like a family, family business, business. Yeah. yeah right with this team anyway family businesses will appoint family members into roles that they do not have the skills or training for this can yeah. have a negative effect on the sets of the business and lead to stressful working environment so I found that on Google because I know a lot of family businesses in the long run do not work out. Well, yeah, that's so the point. You, so when you type in like, why do yeah. family businesses not work out? And that first sentence, they will appoint family members into roles that they do not have the skills they're trained for. Let's be honest. Was Brian Ferentz really uh, – did you think he really had the experience and skills to be offensive coordinator? He was right. a, he was an O-line coach. But not only that, but remember what, what – I, I, I keep forgetting about this, and you might forget about this too. He became the quarterbacks coach, no, a position I, that he no, didn't I said that. play. Correct. I so, told you this season. I said this is either going to be really good or really bad. That he's going to also now be the quarterbacks coach, directly working with a with a quarterback that struggles. So yeah. this is a hand in hand type of situation, like quarterback, offensive coordinator. Like they are attached at the hip right now. As, as yep. the quarterback's coach. So, correct. This is it's, – and we are seeing the results of what this is doing now. Yeah. Correct. So, with Brian Ferentz, I want I want to point this out. I get it. It's Kirk Ferentz's offense, Ken O'Keefe, Greg Davis, Brian. It's all been about the same. Like, there hasn't – I mean, so, at the end of the day, it's Kirk Ferentz's offense. But Brian still calls the plays. I mean, mo- I mean, I would, yeah. I would assume anyway. I mean, maybe Kirk maybe calls some of the I, – I don't know. But I would assume yeah. Brian has yeah. full control of calling every play. And yeah. man, once in a while, he'll have a good, maybe half a p- good play calling. Maybe he'll have a good game. I mean, Ohio State 2017, 2019 Holiday Bowl, but very far and few in between. So that first drive, you, we go right down the field. I love, I'm loving that first drive because going in the game, Illinois' defense is not, or not, I shouldn't say, is actually pretty damn good. And you knew that they were going to, be able to stop us if we were just lining up in I formations with Monty Potabom. You just knew that was going to happen. So what do we do? We kind of we come out kind of spreading the threat, spreading them out, shotgun formations, a lot of motions with Arlen, Nico, and we went right down the field. And I yeah. loved it. And I was about ready to text you or maybe the group chat. I was gonna say, like, man, I'm loving this play calling. But the minute I was really typing that out and then that that dry or the the three possessions down by the end zone where uh we run the football which is fine whatever and then we try to do that shovel pass to um Laporta, Laporta and then it was a third and 14 that I have a major problem with where yeah. we just settle for three and I get it points are a premium uh because both defenses are good but but the number did, one did, the, the, the biggest issue is why Gavin he's not even our best running back why is he right I mean we're gonna run the football Run it with two of our better running backs. So why are we running with Gavin? But number two, you got two tight ends that are six foot four, six foot five. Um, throw the ball in the end zone. Yes, I get it. You intercept it, but who fucking cares? They're gonna get yeah. the ball in at like the twenty yard line, or maybe hell, yeah. maybe five ten yard line with our deep. Like 
You just, yeah. you have to, I don't get, and people were defending it. I, I, I do not defend that at all. I don't defend it either. I told you, I said, I saw some on Twitter was like, you can't tell me. And I completely agree. It's like, you can't tell me that a six foot four and five Sam Laporta, Luke Lachey running, trying to get a matchup where they can get like one-on-one with a corner or a safety and to try to complete like a 50, 50 ball in the, in the corner of an end zone, isn't a higher percentage than us just handing the ball off. What did that do? Did nothing. And, and did like that, we said, don't even, we're not good at running the football. So what were we do? We're just, just wasted down. The only time it, we're, and, and just, the only time we're really run, good at running the football is when we have LaShawn or Caleb in there. Correct. So I, I think me and you have football, said it. We're, we're kind of over Gavin a little bit. I, you know, I, I hate to say it. I just, I haven't seen the production. Um, You know, it seems like he's in there for more like, just to kind of, I, I just feel like he should just be in there like as blocking or like to maybe spare them if they're tired or, you know, maybe get a shot when they're injured. But you, you can just tell when Caleb Johnson, LaShawn Williams have the ball in their hands that they're much more dynamic and explosive. And you just feel so much more, optimistic that they could actually score i just yeah. don't feel like when gavin's I in i just don't i don't think we're gonna we're gonna do much and we haven't so yep another problem i had was we had multiple third and longs where we had and we were talking about this where we had monty a fullback lining up in the backfield running routes so not only was oh he just you know i would get it if like you know he was blocking because our office line's trash and we had the running back going out but he was running routes and our fullback was or and our running back was blocking like i don't i don't get I, that why Okay, number one, my, like, why is he running routes as a defense? You have I, you he he gives you zero worries. And if goes, if and really quick, if anything, Colin, isn't this the time where we have him stay in for pass blocking? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because our offensive line sucks. So and then, he's, and then the best thing he's probably good at is blocking. Like, and then you and then you have the is running it that back hard go out on I, routes. Is I, it I don't this? Get, I, it goes back to like playing our best players. And I said that, do you remember that episode began before the season when I um, laid out like the four groundworks of, to have a better offense. And one of them was like playing your best players and getting the ball in your best players hands. And so far we, we don't, we haven't really done that. We're, we're playing players that shouldn't be out there. Third and long third and 14. No, we have Monty Potterbaum. You think Alabama is doing that? <laughs> Do you think Ohio <laughs> State is doing that? I'm not saying, and when we're in offense is never going to be better as good as those offenses. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, no, like, but you know, no other not just, team is lining up their fullback running routes on third and long. It doesn't why not just, happen. Why not just punt on third down at that point? Seriously, I, and I'm not kidding when I say that. It, we are to the point where why not just punt on third down? Why are we even wasting another opportunity on offense to to do that? What are we doing? I, I mean, it's but it, you know it's not going to work. It doesn't work. It, you, you like you said, what he's he's literally a waste of 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 space out there. You can't tell me that Caleb Johnson running that route for Monty Potabom is going to be a better option. Like this is it, it's just a joke. It is a joke. And if you look at the route concept, it's such a short route concept when we're third and fifteen that it's like, what are we doing? Yeah, he goes down. Like, he goes down. The he middle literally goes up the middle of the up in between the offensive linemen. And does a little out route for like five yards. Yeah, it it's just so sad. It's annoying. I don't know. Um, this is uh the drive right before half <sighs> where we were where we were moving the ball, and at this point you kick a you you get a touchdown here, you make a thirteen to six going to half with the ball coming out of half or even a field goal, chances are pretty likely that we might win this game, and we decide yeah. to do a trick play because. We can't even do normal plays right, so we're gonna do a trick play. And the the mate, okay, the biggest problem I have with this play, well, actually, two. Number one, why are we running the football when when time is kind of at a premium, right? Like we only have twenty eight yeah. seconds to really work with. I know we have two timeouts, but man, twenty eight seconds is not that much. So that's number one. But number two, why is Nico the one running this? Why is this not Arlen Bruce? Like I don't, know. I you like th- that going back to like these plays that we're running. utilizing our best players yes. in, in these type of plays. Yeah. I, and this play is such a high risk, high reward where, yeah, your high reward is he gets five, 10 yards or maybe the first down, but it's so risky that you're like, this is going to happen where you get behind you, the sticks. Do you want to run this, this play for us, Colin, really quick? Well, this is just a pitcher. Oh, okay. Shot. 
Yeah. All right, I got you. The way the play was designed too, it's like he passed it not behind him, but in front of him. I it looked awkward to me. I don't even know if it was I mean, maybe it was how it was supposed to be designed. It just it looks super awkward trying yeah, to run this I, play. I don't And we, we are clearly not it. running it with our best players either. Yeah, which is confusing. And this this play literally gave us gave up the three three points for us because yeah, it took. I mean, we were still in field goal range. He should have made the kick. I'm not saying that, but it, but it essentially took us out of field goal range, kind of, because it was like a minus ten yard loss. Well, you almost so, wonder too if you look at this picture. Yeah, 78 is out here blocking no one, and there's this number 90 that's gonna destroy Nico Regani. I just wonder too, is that is this yeah. just a busted play? I, I don't know. It is, I, well, I, it was a busted play because yeah, if that number, if 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 whoever needs to be blocking number 90 there. Uh, but you could see the open space. If he gets past number yeah. 90, he's going to get like five yards maybe. But I just – I still it, don't like that play call. No. Horrible, horrible play call in that moment. We yeah. had and, – and we had three points. We had three. And you – and points are at a premium with this team. And we – we have shot ourselves continuously in the foot. I saw a tweet. It's like we are the yeah. – we're the, we're the, we're the number one team in the country at getting negative yardage <laughs> plays. And it's so yep. true. Here's another one. This was like, look at this. Beginning of the fourth quarter at this point. Oh, my we're God. We're at the point where whoever yeah. scores next is probably going to win the football game. And we're For actually sure. driving here. We're at the 38-yard line. We get, what, 10 more yards. We're in field goal range. And <laughs> we're this drive, we, once again, we were driving this drive. We, we didn't start at, like, the 50. I mean, I think we started at, like, the 30-yard line. I mean, we, we started yeah. back, and we were driving. And we decide – this isn't really a trick play, but we decide to do, once again, another high-risk, high-reward play. Why are we doing this? If we can't even run normal plays, why are we trying to do these these high-risk, high-reward plays? I don't get it. I mean, look at how he catches it. We are it. six yards behind the line of scrimmage, scrimmage when he catches this ball, maybe yep. even more if he backs up towards it. There, You can't tell me that in, that that in, a competent offensive coordinator – Calls a play where we're throwing it as even a screen seven potentially seven to eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. It, what what are we doing? It I, makes zero sense because because you run a normal play there and let's say it gets nothing. Well, it's third down and six, probably and, third and four, like yeah. third, manageable. You 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 just ruined your drive and like you said, we no. were driving. Is it that hard? It's like it's you just so, have to ask yourself. Yeah, I, I you just and I I make fun, but it's like seriously, it's like sometimes it's like, man, I know not to call that play. <laughs> like, this does is, that make me more qualified? I right. don't know. <laughs> you just ask, you just you joke about it, but sometimes you just wonder if it's true. Yeah, this is uh taken. Obviously, this doesn't take into account the fourth quarter. About one point, our first eight drives, five out of the eight drives produce negative yards. <laughs> Isn't that and and you look at this here. Uh, we this is the turn two turnovers that Illinois had. Illinois, we started at the Illinois 35. Yeah. We're, we're already in field goal range practically, and we go three plays minus six yards. So we have to punt. Yeah. And then the fall, and then they fumble it the fall, the next play, or yeah, or the next drive, and we get the ball at the five yard line. Minus four plays minus four yards, and we have to kick a field goal. It's just it's just classic. So in in two you're, you're you're telling me in two possessions where our special teams and defense came up amazingly huge. Yep. We combined for negative ten yards on offense. Yep. That's the, the that, that is drive. that is unacceptable in college yep. in, in any in any you know level of sports. But like you you're in college football and this is what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Like, and no. then the two drives where we actually, you know, like this first drive, 59 yards, we can't, we can't get the touchdown or this can't drive convert. right here. Sure. 10 52. No. And then we do, we try to do that trick play and it gets blown up. And then we have to try to kick a field goal that we miss. So it's just, it's so annoying. Um, and we've got one, two, three, four, just in this screen here, there's four, three and outs. I mean, it, you know, it, that's another thing. We're terrible. We're terrible on third down. We put ourselves yeah. well, and when you're getting negative yardage, clearly you're not going to convert third downs. But it's just every stat is so crazy. But for like me and you now, six weeks, we're like used to it. Like we're yeah, like we're, not even shocked anymore. We're shocked right. when we go for 10 plays, 59 yards, which is common to most teams. Yet for us, it's like, oh my God, we actually got three points. Holy cow. Yep. Congrats, Iowa. And then we followed up with 
three plays, six yards, three plays, negative 11 yards, three plays, negative six yards, four plays, negative four yards. Like, are you joking right now? That's insane. Uh, another thing I put, I didn't, I didn't include the slide, but um, that the, the Quinn Schulte interception, we start at the one yard line and I get, you know, you want to do a QB sneak, you know, get out a little bit, but we do two QB sneaks in a row. And, and that just <clears> tells <throat> me that we were okay with punting the football again and playing yep. the field position game. Yep. And it's like, I like, and that's another, just, that's just like horrible play calling. I get you maybe the first, yeah. First down play you, you do a QB sneak, maybe get two or three yards can, you know, get a little bit of cushion, but then we do another QB sneak. It's like, are we wanting to win this game or are we well, okay you, with? Yeah. Losing I mean, you the ask, game? you ask yourself, Colin, this is the same, really, this is identical to last year. We just pointed out the stats, how we were on offense last year, but what was the difference? We won last year, yeah, right? We won. So, and we almost all of won us last were kind night. of a, think about correct. that. Think about if that fumble wouldn't have been, you know, Riley Moss would have won a touchdown and, and maybe that wouldn't, you know, it would have been great that we won, but once again, maybe it's to the point where, you know, I was going to say, start I, losing you know, some of these games to maybe actually see a real change. I'm not trying to be cynical. I don't wish for Iowa to lose games. I would never wish that. I just think the way that we're playing, I am not going to be mad that we are, we're not coming out on top with a victory, the way that we're playing right now. And and that's where, like, if you want, like you said, if you want real change to happen, maybe we have to go four and eight for that to happen. I don't know. I mean, seriously, it's to the point now where I start looking ahead. We might beat Northwestern. Yeah, maybe, we'll, we'll get into that. I have the schedule here soon. That we'll, okay. we'll get we'll get all into right. all that. Um, and then my third and final wish. So I had my first one, which was like just account, you know, accountability, uh, saying to yourself, yeah, we need a change. And then this is the last one, the third one. KF swallows his pride, eagle stubbornness, and gives a new OC, whoever it is, if we actually even hire a new OC. Full control of the offense. I keep saying this to you. Um, yeah. I don't care if we hire – I don't care who we hire. It's going to be the same offense until Kirk actually, once again, swallows his pride, his ego, and stubbornness and lets whoever the new OC is full control yeah. of the offense. Yep. Until that happens, it's that or uh, or or what what you said you don't wish to happen is to Kirk to obviously get fired or or whatever. But if he unless he's out or he like you said he he finally releases full control, full control. It's you will see no matter who's in an offensive coordinator, you will see a similar style yeah. of offense. We've seen it for ever. So here's the thing too, like let's just say Kirk went out and, fought and and found like a decent offensive coordinator that was, you know, well respected, whatever. And he told them like, you're going to have full control. The thing is, is like, Iowa has like the pieces to have a decent offense. Like you, you do hundred percent. You go in the portal. You, you would need to find maybe another receiver. Um, now this is, this, this is if Keegan and Arlen stay, because I have a hard time believing, I, I feel like they're both going to leave this year. I just, here's the key though. Th I, I think that they, they need to be, they need to be told that they're getting a new offensive coordinator. Yeah, or I, something. I really, or something. But even with those two back, like I still think like we would need to get like another receiver in the transfer portal. We would yeah. never get a like a proven really good receiver because who would want to come to Iowa? But you know there has to be a, a someone out there that's unproven that's good but just unproven. Right. We need to get someone like that. Hell, if you're if you do not feel good about Labus or some of the quarterbacks coming in, then you got to go out in the portal and get a quarterback. Offensive line is terrible. It's young, but it's not very good. Maybe you need to go in the portal and get one or two offensive linemen. Um, but other than that, like you, ha we have the pieces in place. Like as an OC coming in, if whoever came in, like you have decent running backs. Like I, I would, I would take Caleb and and Lashawn. And I mean, they're good running backs. So it starts right there. If if obviously Keegan and Arlen stay, you have a good group of of receivers. Um, yeah. You're always going to have good tight ends at Iowa. Like. We have the pieces. It's not like our our offensive personnel is just terrible because it's really not that. It's just everything else that's kind of involved. The only thing I will say that is terrible is the quarterback, but everything else is in the offensive line. But yeah, you at least have the pieces. There's key place, pieces. Uh, you, you have you uh, have a building. You have the building blocks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You have the foundation, and yep. and you just need to kind of add a tweak a few things here or there. What I'll say is I agree with you. We need to go out in the transfer portal, but that doesn't that everything against Kirk Ferentz, What's what Kirk, he believes yeah, in. That's so like exactly. And again, that's a complete mindset shift. And I feel like now with it's never gonna happen with the way it is, like if he doesn't adapt, you know, adapt adapt to the times, if he's not able to do that, 
like you said, this might not just be, uh, you know, this year and last year. This might be a, a theme for the foreseeable future. I really hope it's not, but it's, it's he like has to be able saying, to adapt Tyler, to college football. I either don't know. die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. And with Kirk, I mean, it's yeah. I I don't want that to happen. No, but, I don't either. Man, I don't like either. this thing could really. This yeah. thing could really get ugly. I mean, because you you're gonna you might potentially lose some good recruits. You might lose some guys in the transfer portal. Things could go really south, and yeah. it could be a rough for couple of years. For what his pride? I mean, that's yeah, the that's it's... what you have to ask yourself. It's like for what you and 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 it's like you know you get these people that you know just say like, well, what do we know? We're just fans. We know what well, we what we know is we know it's not working. Can we can we try? Can we see the ability? to try something different. Yeah. Can exactly. I just ask this? That's, that's can all I, I would. Can, can, last night, I would have loved to just see like a game like that. Nothing's been really working besides throwing it to Sam Laporta. Or, or at some point, sorry, not just last night, but anytime this season, when is Padilla not a thing? I, I just, I just don't get it. What, you can't what? tell me he's worse than what we have out there from what i i've heard from multiple rumors i don't know if this is true but sounds like he did he's kind of just he doesn't even want to play is from what i've heard um i just don't know if that can be possible I, yeah, why would I they keep him on the team though like, I, I, don't, I don't know but i've heard that from multiple people that know people in the program that he just doesn't practice well enough and and but stays he's just he's just, he's just over i mean he, He's just, He's just over, over it. it. Yeah. And he that he'll come in when he absolutely has to, or what? Yeah. I don't know. I, I really don't know the full thing, but there, there is, is there, definitely I'm, something I mean, I'm there. not, I'm not wishing Petrus to get injured, but there was a potential play last night where I thought he was going to be knocked out when he got targeted and, or, well, technically not targeting, but basically a personal foul penalty. Um, I, I thought he was going to have to come out of the game for a little bit. And I was like, well, maybe this is the time we're actually going to see Padilla. Well, obviously we didn't. He wasn't, yeah. you know, knocked out of the game or anything like that. But I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. We, I just, we, 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 took we don't two, even play. Or, we don't even try different players no. to, to. It's just at this point, I just don't even know anymore. We didn't, we didn't attack down the middle of the field, or we didn't throw the ball down the field one time last night, like long nope. ball. Nope. One time we didn't, nope. we didn't do that. Go back to the Nevada game. We did it like six or seven times. I was like, wow, maybe, maybe we nope. are going to. It was just Nevada con. Yeah, it was yep. just Nevada. So let's take a look at the stats here real quick. Cause I don't even really want to talk about this game. Offense sucked. Defense was good. It's story yeah. of Iowa's lives and every game, but um, yeah, with stats terrible again, I think the penalties is one thing too, where it's like, man, Iowa usually interference. We don't have that many penalties. And most of these penalties it's becoming are, a problem are on the offense. And yeah. it's, it's really not so many holds. Limiting us. Yeah. It, it's um, ridiculous. And then they had three turnovers. If I would have told you before the game, hey, Illinois is going to have three turnovers. And I know we had one, but it's at the, it was at the that, end of the game. So, no. yeah. yeah. So, Doesn't if I would have said Illinois. Three it was three to zero at the time. Yeah. You say we win easily. 100%. You say we win like 21 to seven probably or whatever the case. The announcers, about. the announcers announcing the game last night, Colin, were like shocked. They're like, they're like, yeah, no, if you win the turnover batter three to zero, you, you know, usually are winning pretty handily yeah. but but you know illinois defense and they you're trying to give illinois defense credit and it's just like no don't give them too much credit our offense is that bad guys it's okay yeah. so this came out today scoring offense we are now 127th in the nation 14.7 and a lot of it was because it's because of our defense um oh, I think, okay yeah. so like this year how many touchdowns have we scored so first game zero iowa state game one nevada three so we're up to four um rutgers one no so Rutgers have, two did we get did we score two yeah the the uh Dejean pick six no and I'm then... talking offensive touchdowns oh offense sorry yeah. I'm talking so, defensive. yeah so okay. four and then one sorry, at Rutgers sorry. so we're at so five and then if you want to count okay two at Michigan but if you want to count the that if you don't want to count the garbage time we have six offensive touchdowns this year <laughs> but if, if you count that garbage time touchdown we have seven Total yeah, offense, okay. so we are, seven seven touchdowns. We are in dead six last games. to Colorado State, who is one and four. I think they finally won this week against Nevada. So yeah. um we are dead last. But once again, there's no problem though, according to Ference. I mean No. Nothing, and, nothing. and that here's the thing, Colin. We we would beat Colorado State like like fourteen to zero. 
And like that is the saddest thing I would ever hear. Ever yeah, hear about Colorado life. State is awful. awful Massachusetts but, is awful. But, New Mexico but is awful. We all these teams. We would literally beat them like like seventeen nothing. Yeah. Maybe twenty one nothing. And it's so sad, right? Like this these are the bottom of the barrel type of teams right now. And you see Iowa mixed in with like UAB and you know, Utah State, Colorado State. It's just it's bad right now. It's bad yeah. times. Um, resident offense. I, I, I really just want to show this because we're obviously last or almost at last again, we're at 66%. But the thing that I just find so funny is we've only had 12 red zone attempts. You look at some of these other schools that are terrible having yeah. almost double than we are. I mean, that's just pathetic. Northwestern who is one in five and just got their butts kicked, uh, against Wisconsin yeah. has 20 that's red zone 20. attempts has, has eight more than us. Talking about Colorado State, they only have six. That's how bad of a football program Colorado State is, and they're still ahead of us in total yardage. I mean, that's just terrible. Well, and they're they have even one more red zone passing touchdown than we do, and half the attempts. So, I mean, how we many don't. Passing we, touchdowns we, do we have one, God, one, one. So we have one passing cold. touchdown in the red zone. We we Such we when joke. we get to the twenty yard line, Colin, it is almost a guarantee we are kicking a field goal, obviously, yep. or we shoot ourselves in the foot where we punt. So Seriously, we, we end the, up punting. The, if if you don't like to gamble but you want to make some money, the best bets is always taking Iowa under, oh, unless you're playing Ohio State. Yep. And then you go to the live bet section, and every time we have the ball, and if we get into like the 30, 20 yard line, just just put down that the, we're going to kick a yeah. field goal, and you you're going to make the odds are going to be decent, or eh, maybe maybe not. So probably decent. not, but but you're yeah. still going to make some money. You'll because make money. more times than not. We're just going to kick a field goal. Um, yeah. And then this is just scoring defense. We're still ranked third in the country. Um, Illinois, number one. Min- hey, Minnesota, we have here in about a month. That's not going to be a win. Um, and no. then total defense, we actually fell a little bit, but we're still top 10. So yeah. where do we go from here? Well, we got Ohio State on the board. <laughs> that's going to be a great win. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, so we'll probably know tomorrow, actually, what time that's at. It doesn't, at this point, I've so for no. the longest time, I was like, oh, I'm hoping it's 11 a.m. game. But now it's like I don't even really care because we're not gonna we're gonna get blown out regardless. Let's let's hope it's an eleven a game eleven a.m. game. That way it gets done and over with very quickly. Yeah. Let's just true. say that. Or let's just hope it's a Friday night game. What about that? <laughs> let's get, it, get it really over and done with. Knowing knowing us, it'll be maybe not like you know the ABC you know game of the week, Gotta but it'll be not. it'll be yeah. You know, well, that I don't want to be on of. national TV. That's the thing. It'll be big noon kickoff, or it'll be just wait, just you wait, and it'll be it'll be bad. I yeah. don't know. So we're gonna be three and four going in Northwestern. Correct. Home, home game, and Northwestern is a very winnable game. But against Northwestern, they're always they always play us good, and so it would not it would no especially this yeah. year it would not shock me if they. It's not that. a winnable it's, game. It's no. it, it's a very winnable game. Sorry, it is not a chalk it up as a yeah. win game. There is not a single opponent on here you look that at the I last am confident in. 10 years with Northwestern. I mean, I think we're I, I want to go back and look at the record, but we I'm pretty sure they are they are winning, you know, the record wise against yeah. us. I mean, they just have our number. Um, and then at Purdue, that's a loss because we're not gonna that's gonna be like a track meet where you're gonna have to keep up with them. Well and because I've you know they're gonna put not, up points. Yeah, we're not beating up, Purdue until we no. beat Purdue. And and this is this isn't even like when our offense, I knew our offense was gonna be like what it was. Um, expect Charlie Jones to have a heyday. Um, yeah. one. We're gonna put up at least twenty points, and so can our offense yeah. match? And I don't think so. So that's a loss. No. Wisconsin at home. Maybe a week ago I felt a little bit better, but then you just saw what they did against. I mean, they're gonna play inspired football now. Uh, with Newton, you know, uh, Leonard or whatever his name is. Yeah, and, Jim Leonard. Yep. So that's not gonna. And, and they have our number too. So because yeah. they play the same style as us, they just do it a little bit better than us. So they're Correct. gonna probably win. We're not going to beat Minnesota. Minnesota is actually a good football team, despite them losing last week. But they're still a good football team. Their defense is once again number two in the, in the nation. And we're how is our offense going to score against them? And you know they're going to put up some points. And then Nebraska at home to finish off the year. And Nebraska, for how bad they've been the last five years, they've kept it pretty damn close against us every single year. So that's not think a about this, Colin. The sh- the streaks of Iowa State, Minnesota, Nebraska might all come to an end in all one yeah. year. Which, about that. once That's again, crazy. you know, if that, that has to happen, that has to happen. I and agree. Going to next year, and like I said, you know, kind of, I'm not saying blow it all up, but it, it will be uh, a very good um, thing going into next year that, yeah, 
things need to change. Because yeah. I think the, I think what happened was we were so content in the offseason. I mean, yes, they said we're, you know, some changes, but I think we were so content because we won 10 games last year, made it to the Big Ten Championship game. Yes, we got our, you know, butts kicked, but we still made it there. West Division champions. Yeah. Uh, played a very good Kentucky team or decently, and we almost won. So they were just, I just felt like they, they were, they just felt content. You know, look, I mean, we, we did just yeah. fine. And, Let's you know. just replicate what we did last year. Play really good defense to special teams. Hope that they can get us, you know, some more opportunities yeah. to turn the ball over. And then our offense, like what we always say, is probably obviously what they're hoping. We just have to be average. Well, average. Uh, they knew how bad we were in the offseason. Yeah. They 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 saw this in practice. Like this is not some like breaking news here to this coaching staff or even probably the players. Going into this year, they're the ones that know, like, oh, my God, we are going to be very bad. Do you remember my – before the season when I brought this up, and and I don't you might have agreed with me or not, but remember I had this kind of theory – or not maybe not theory, but I felt – this is kind of my theory of why Charlie Jones left. He left right after the spring game, and I think it's – Oh, yeah. He, he left because he, he did the entire spring – you know, he went through spring practice with the spring game – and I think he was just like, wow, it's the same. It's yeah. going to be the same. And why? why they, they, players know. I oh, mean, yeah, I, players I know. get it. Purdue obviously probably did some recruiting and, you know, yeah, all this sure. stuff. But I really, that, that was the, when he left, that was the first thing I thought of. And I text, I remember texting Austin. Oh, you're right. Dad, <laughs> and then I mentioned it in the podcast. I was like, I really have this feeling that the reason why he left is because he truly knows that it's going to be the same offense and sure enough yeah it's yep. it's the same but even worse but even worse we we um you know you're exactly right he he looked at the situation and goes nothing that we're doing is different and yeah, it's is going to be successful and i'm sorry i want to get the football thrown to me but also i want to win and I think he's like, how how likely is it that we're going to replicate what we did on defense and special teams last year to get us a 10-win decision? Yeah, no way. Exactly. So, yeah. And this is another frustrating part, looking at the Big Ten standings. You know, once again, if we had decent offense with our defense, you know, we win the West easily this year because the Big Ten West is not very good. The fact that Illinois is lead in Nebraska, a team that they just hired their coach like three weeks ago. And got their butts kicked against a bad Oklahoma team who lost to a very bad Northwestern team who lost to a Georgia Southern team that has lost like they're like one in or they have like one or two wins. Like, yeah, they're tied for first place. Are you kidding me? Now, obviously, there's a lot of season left. They're not going to win the West. I mean, they they got a pretty tough schedule. But right now, as we stand, like the fact that they are tied right. for for winning the West. I mean, that shows how bad the West is and the fact that. And and for how good our offense is, for how bad, oh, I just I don't get it. In a in a year where Wisconsin's very beatable, in a year yeah. where all yeah, these teams are beatable, all, really every yeah no in in every year or sorry every team is beatable like this. It's just it's it's extremely you know frustrating to to be where we're at and um. You know, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, and obviously this is no shock, but it's, you know, we're we're going to finish at the bottom of the Big Ten this year, you know, within the bottom two, three for sure. I just – I can't see otherwise right now. Um, our offense is that bad where we will lose almost probably every other game. And I, I hate to say it. I hate to be such a negative fan. I just can't see – if we do what we did last night against Illinois – what makes you think, like you said, are we we're gonna be able to beat Purdue, Minnesota, Wisconsin? I, I, it's just there's just no way. So yeah. we, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe five maybe seven. we surprise a team and we somehow have a weird random game where our defense goes nuts and we 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 win a game. I, I great, but it's not going to be because of our offense. Yeah, there's just no way. Obviously. I mean, I, I so, really think yeah, what maybe one or two more. I mean, five and seven. Mm, if, if I would have to go, to it's the, the max. Yeah, yeah, I think I would go four um, and eight, but yes, I agree. So look around the Big Ten West real quick. Nebraska obviously won Friday night, fourteen to thirteen. Man, I mean they were down thirteen zero. And what happened at the end of that game? What was the? the there was like some animosity at the end of that game, wasn't oh, there? Or something? Yeah, their their players were like I didn't talk shit. I was just curious. It, it was just yeah, oh. it's like classic. It's like oh, it's like geez, yeah, geez. like they've won something. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. But but man, you gotta give them. 
I mean, I guess props, I, you know, yeah, going from give them credit. They were down big early and they yeah. came back. They're down what 13 nothing or something. Yeah, and and their defense, yeah. like I said, is playing way better after they fired their def- defensive coordinator. It's true. It's true. Um Purdue, Maryland, that was a great game. I, I don't yeah. know how Big Ten Fox are. We were talking about the big noon kickoff, why they didn't go to that game. Um, oh. But that was a great game. Purdue's a good – I mean, they're – I really thought, okay, so they they weren't looking very good, and I really thought they were going to start like 0-3 yeah. in the Big Ten because they obviously lost to Penn State, but I did not think they were going to beat Minnesota, and I did not think they were going to go on the road and beat Maryland. And, and give them props. They won two in a row. Very impressive. On the road at Minnesota, yeah. on the road at Maryland. That's very impressive. I think, yep. like I said – Right now, Purdue's kind of the team to beat. Well, number one, they they beat the other team that I think might win the West, Minnesota. So they already own the tiebreaker there. So they yep. might be the team. If they can continue to play well, they will probably be the team. They play Nebraska this weekend. I I fully expect Purdue to to beat Nebraska. I think Nebraska's going to come down to earth here pretty soon. Um, and then, man, Wisconsin 42-7 to against Northwestern. I think this is more on Northwestern than Wisconsin. Man, like Northwestern, yeah. just a terrible – I mean, like what – I mean, we're we're talking change with us. I mean, what do they do with Pat Fitzgerald? I mean, man, it's it's been rough the last two years for them. Three and nine yeah. last year. This year, one and five. They just they have no, just nothing to to, to yeah. talk about. As and, I say, there's nothing to really hang their hat on besides some new a new stadium coming in the future. Yeah. that's about it. Um, and then yeah, yeah. Ohio State the team that we face in two weeks killed Michigan State, which was expected. Michigan State's pretty damn bad, and man, you got to feel for Michigan State. Um. That huge yeah. contract, Mel Tucker, not looking too hot. And then Michigan um, kept it close in the first half, but really turned it on in the second half and, you know, cruise Indiana 31 to 10. So I think it's safe to say, safe to assume it's going to be Ohio State, Michigan um, for the battle of the Big Ten East. Um, can we get to the point where Big Ten West doesn't even make it to the championship game and it's like <laughs> Ohio State, Michigan rematch because that's going to be a way better the game than seeing Ohio State play Purdue or Ohio State play, yeah. play Minnesota because you know it's going to be like a uh, – I know. Well, this is where it's like – 30-point win. Yeah, I know. It's like now now that we're, you know, basically out of it, it's just now you wish there was no divisions and it yeah. was just like based off of record, right? Like Exactly. The fact that it we do have divisions and we are in the easiest division of all and we are what we are is even more depressing and sad, but that's probably another story for another time. So, yep. <laughs> um, some other games than yesterday, there were just two other games I just picked. TCU oh, Kansas, hell of a great game. game, great game. Yep. Um, that was that was fantastic to watch. It annoys me because that quarterback for TCU, Duggan, from, yep, from Iowa, we mm, talked about it last podcast, maybe or maybe major dual threat. And, yeah, in fact, like, mm, can you imagine if we had him? But no, of course, uh, we would, we would never want him because why? Why would we want yeah. a dual threat quarterback? Um. I mean, Kansas State, Iowa State. Um, I will say this with Iowa State, and because I know I have some people that listen to this up podcast that are Iowa State fans. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, you, I mean, your team's not very good, but you can't be too mad because you almost kind of expected. I mean, you yeah. lost pretty much everybody from last year. Very right. young football team, start new starting quarterback. Like, I mean, let's be real. I, I thought they were gonna be decently good this year because they're they always perform better under the radar yeah, but yeah. i mean this is kind of expected i mean i didn't think they would start owing three in the big 12 but three and three they, i mean that so, i don't yeah. know they finished if they finished six and six or something i think that's that's kind of a win because for how young of a team they how are, young right? of a team and they're in all these games i mean they, they have a great defense like you hold kansas state to 10 points i mean that's pretty That's damn good. Very impressive. And the Big 12 is known for offense. And yeah. Iowa State does have a pretty dang good defense. You, the, you have to admit. The so problem with they, Iowa like State you said, is I, I think schedules. Yeah, go ahead. Off. Oh, it That's doesn't get very it, tough. it. It gets so much harder from here on out. Yeah. And that's where, you know, you know, like Iowa State in a way reminds me of like Iowa this year. It's like good defense. Um, probably gonna be in a lot of your games, but yeah, the offense just right now it, for Iowa State is not is not clicking either. But wow. Like you I, said, they have a brand brand new brand new young quarterback that is only going to get better, and they have a lot to look forward to future wise. I feel like so, yeah, you know, it's, and like it's, it's it's not like you're you know sitting here being like, oh my god, we're going to be just terrible next year. It's like no, you're gonna you'll be you'll be competitive. Yeah, and like the Kansas game, they should have won that game. Should have won that game. Um, yeah, and that was without their running back. I mean, he right. got hurt like the first game, the first play. Right. Should have won that game. And then, yeah, like last night, they had every opportunity. I mean, they could easily be two and one right now in the Big 12, and, and things yeah. could things would be looking way better. But 
they're not. And yeah, they have to go on the road at Texas. They still have to play Oklahoma State. They're just one forty nine yeah. and nothing against Oklahoma. Still have wow, to play TCU. Yeah. And they still have to play. And I get it. They, Oklahoma's not good, but but you still have to play. I mean, it's still Oklahoma. Like yeah. I, I know they're not good, but like it's like Iowa playing like Wisconsin. Like let's say Wisconsin wasn't very good, which they kind of aren't, but it's it's still Wisconsin. Like so. <laughs> They still, they still have some tough games, and yep. yeah, I mean Iowa State, similar to Iowa, might not make it to a bowl game, but for Iowa State, that's I they, mean, for Iowa, that's pretty because it's like we brought back almost like like seventeen guys. Like, no, yeah. we should be making to a bowl game. That's uncalled right. for. For Iowa State, it's more well, you, you know, lost a lot, everybody. You, you, yeah, your best, arguably your best team in terms of I know their record wasn't very yeah. good last year, but just on paper. And Brock Purdy, you know, you lost some good guys yeah. last year. Do they? Then, do they play Oklahoma State this year too? They do. They play. I mean, that's what oh. I like about the Big Twelve. All the Big Twelve teams play each. Team. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Not. And then, I mean, God damn, what's his name? Um, running back from last year, uh, Brock. Um, or God, what the fuck? Oh, is Brees name? Hall. Brees Hall. Um, man, he's doing so good for the Jets. By the way, like, yeah, he's, he's putting up a lot, like, good numbers, and so which you could see losing he's him. A stud. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like Michigan State oh, and Kenneth Walker. You know? It's just hard. Yeah, it's hard to replace when you when you have such a, and that's why like if you're Iowa State, you know when they had all those that great you know, you know on paper team, that's when you're disappointed, right? Not not this year, I don't yeah. think. You know, so but yeah, crazy. Yeah, a lot of a lot of interesting games this weekend. Um, Did you see yeah, the slate no. for next weekend? I no, I haven't. Um. Good or bad. Very, very good games. Starting yeah. off, 11 a.m., Michigan State, Penn State, and then the 2.30 game, Alabama at Tennessee. Ooh. That's and no Iowa game. that I have nope. to get stressed like stress about or for. sad about? Yeah. All right. I yep. can just sit back. This would be perfect. Yep. Wow. So, yeah, it's going to be some good games on this weekend. I'm really excited for it. And then there's some other good games on, too, but those are, like, the two big games. Um, Iowa State nice. obviously plays Texas. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But, well, okay, well, that's it for this podcast. Obviously, we have a bye week, so we're probably going to take a bye week ourselves. So yeah. So we're probably we'll not going to have one this, week. this yeah. Wednesday. Um, So probably won't or see Or Sunday. A, yeah, or yeah. Sunday. So we'll probably be back. Um, About a week and a half. Week and a half. The, probably not this Wednesday, but the following one. We'll yeah, have a we'll, podcast out podcast for Thursday. Out. So talk, talk a little Ohio State, I guess, Iowa. <laughs> Maybe oh. by then we'll, you know, maybe there's be some big news. Maybe not. We'll get into all that. Um, I know. will say we're great during bye weeks, right? Oh, wait, no. Yeah, no, uh, we, we got off. We're, and we're actually, think about we it. talked about that last year. Ohio we're State has a bye week too. So. They have a bye week and it's yeah, not, not, not good. Well, so. I was telling you, well, real quick, and to finish off, I, I made this comment last night, and I think you agreed with me. You almost wish that we played Ohio State this week, and we and were Illinois, preparing yeah. a bye for for Illinois. No, yeah, I do because I hate, it, it I hate just, to say this, yeah. but I hate wasting a bye week on Ohio State. It's no. like the only the only thing is, I would say maybe injury wise, getting some sure, players back. But sure, I mean, there's no one that's injured right now that is gonna make He's gonna make, make the or difference break, up. Yeah, no. for, against Ohio State, right. the only one. I mean, yeah, maybe if. Um, Justin Jacobs, but he's out for the year. But like, let's say if he was right, like, right, yeah, we right. might get Devonte Vines back. But what? I mean, he's not gonna. What he's together. never played yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no, it's no. not that big of a we deal. Don't, so we don't throw to receivers anyway. So yeah, no kidding. Sorry. All right. Well, that will be it for this uh, episode. Um, we'll see you guys all um, in about a week and a half. Uh, stay positive, hey, I guess. Change is a must, right? Change is a must. Yep. Change is a must. I don't know. Go Hawks. Talk all to right. you later, Tyler. Have Go a good night, Hawks man. See you. Later.